I'm asked about the composition of the Sephirot, the 10 Sephirot in Keter, 10 Sephirot in Chokhmah. I have just been asked what is the difference between Chokhmah in Keter and Keter in Chokhmah. I repeat once again, each Sephira represents a different aspect. If we metaphorically imagine two people, what is the difference between one person's thought and another person's thought? They differ, each has their own train of thought. You might say to me that it's not only two different people, but, so to say, two different aspects. So, if we, using metaphor, imagine that Keter is the giver and Chokhmah is the thought or the light that he extends or that he thinks, then there is a difference between a person and what he thinks. A person can think nothing and still continue to be a person. Let's say Keter is that person and Chokhmah is what he thinks. So, what is the difference between Keter of Chokhmah and Chokhmah of Keter? It is the ten sephirot of the one who is acting, and it is the ten sephirot of his world of thought. So, what is the difference between Keter of Chokhmah and Chokhmah of Keter? that is the root of thought, and Chokhmah is already the thought itself. The thought will already act there. And here, there is no thought yet, only the root. Therefore, when we say Keter of Chokhmah, this is the one who gives thought. And when we say Chokhmah in Keter, it is all types of thoughts that can exist in a root, in a potential state. Keter in Chokhmah is the one who gives thought. And Chokhmah in Keter is all thoughts that can potentially exist. And everything has to be studied this way. We need to consider each sephira according to the qualities that it has. That is, if Keter is the root, then everything that happens in it are roots, potentials, that have not yet been revealed in action. They are in the root, everything is there. And if we consider Chokhmah, then it is already something that came out of Keter. It already came out from there. The same will be with Bina and Zer Anpin and Malchut. Today we will learn a comprehensive explanation of what the Sefra of Bina is. To understand the Sefra of Bina well, let's examine its main characteristics. Each Sefra has its own world, its own divine name, its own level of light its own type of angels, its own color, its own element, and its own special manifestation of matter and form. Bina belongs to the world of Bria. This is the world where souls have already emerged into a separate reality, but are closely aware of the personal governance of the Creator and desire to be similar to Him and give back. The name of this Sephra is Elohim, and it should be known that any divine name indicates the influence of the world of Atzalut. The color of this Sephra is red. It symbolizes the attribute of giving, as in the word Adam. The Hebrew word for red is Adam, which is similar to the word Adam and Dome. Adome ele Eliot means I will resemble the highest. This Sephra corresponds to the angels of Kravim, which in English are called Cherubim, but in Hebrew it is pronounced correctly as Kravim, 
derived from the word karov, which means close. They are the closest to the world of Atzilut. They were depicted at the tabernacle in the form of a man and woman with wings. They are in the Holy of Holies of the world of Bria and symbolize the spiritual connection between light and vessel. They symbolize the highest love. If there is no connection above, they lower their wings. And conversely, when they unite above, they raise their wings upward. Bina is the element of water. Water is a symbol of life, without it a person cannot exist. It is also a symbol of Torah, which, like water, purifies the soul. There are many levels of Bina in the worlds. In general, it symbolizes freedom. The Jubilee year, when they release and grant amnesty, is 50 years. According to the Torah, the 50th year is the year when debtors are released from debts. All those who were in slavery are given freedom, and so on. And all this corresponds to the 50 gates of Bina. When you study more in-depth material, you will see that Bina has the concept of 50 gates of Bina. Bina has the property of rebounding and gives a person the opportunity to free themselves from the slavery of egoism, to be free from the opinions of people and material laws, to serve the Creator, to live according to His laws. We learned that there is Keter, and Keter is giving. He gives light, he wants to give light. And since we never talk about light without a vessel, because we do not speak philosophically, but about the world of the comprehenders, then we always say that the light comes together with the vessel. So we always say that the light is inseparable from the vessel. So we learned in the previous lesson that Chokhmah already includes a vessel. Only the vessel is the potential here, and it is completely annulled in the light that came out of Keter. It wants to give pleasure, and from it light came out. How much does it want to give pleasure? Infinitely. Bina is a sephra in which as it appears in the array, we must know the rule. When we give a name to something, it means that something has appeared. Since the name has changed from Chokhmah to Bina, this means that something new has appeared. What new thing has appeared? This vessel that was potential in Chokhmah, in the final stage of development, awakens to be similar to Keter. This is what we learned, this is what we learned, that Bina in Chokhmah carries the desire to resemble him to the one receiving this light. The light itself carries the desire to resemble him. Baal Sulam gives this parable that when a rich man gives to a poor man, he eventually develops a desire to repay him with the same, to be like him, to thank him, to return good with good, love with love. So when Keter, the giver, gave light, the vessel that was potential in it awakens to be similar to him. When this vessel awakens to be similar to him, it transforms into Bina and a new reality appears. The new reality is the one who wants to be similar to Keter. He does not want to receive from Chokhmah. That is, he does not want this light which is given to him directly from the giver. He wants to receive a different kind of pleasure. Why? Because what I give him, I am just like him, I am equal. He is a giver and I am a giver. From this a new kind of light appears in Bina, a new sensation. This light is called Hesed.
Hesed in Hebrew means mercy. I want to be a giver. This is Bina. Bina has a red color. This color symbolizes the property of giving. I don't have a red color. I'm using this one. Red in Hebrew is Adam, from the word Adame Le'Ilion, I will resemble the higher one. The name that Bina has is written in Hebrew like this. I deliberately separate so that I can erase this name, to erase just the name. This is how the name Bina is written. Elohim is judgment. Sometimes judges are called by this name in the Torah. People who judge are called Elohim. So Moses was named in Psalms Ish Elohim, divine man or one who manifests the power of judgment. This is a symbol of the screen in Kabbalah. Everything you will encounter under the word Elohim in Kabbalah symbolizes resistance to light. Bina has a property that was not manifested in other sefer. It symbolizes resistance to acceptance. Therefore, the main quality that can be manifested is freedom. What is Bina's freedom? That it can refuse to accept. As long as a person is accepting, he depends on what he accepts. That is, I want it, I depend on it. Bina does not want to accept, it wants to give, it wants to be giving, and therefore it has no desire for itself. Rather, it exists within it, but it does not want to use it. It wants to be like the one it looks up to. Bina is also a place of imitation. That is, from this moment on, creative nature wants to imitate the Almighty. It wants to behave like Him. This is where a child or person begins to imitate some authority figure of his own. He sees someone big and wants to be like him. The angels that belong to this sephira are called cherubim. From the word karov, close. Why close? They want to approach. These forces bring closer to this source. They do not want to be accepting like Chokhmah. They want to be giving. This is where the manifestation of creation begins. Before this place, creation does not manifest itself. There is a giver, and there is what he wants to give us. The recipient is in potential like an embryo. From this place, it begins its manifestation. It wants to be like him. It wants to be an adult. It wants to be like the big one, like the great one. It begins to want to manifest itself. From this place, you can say that the root of all desires appears. The feeling, I want, begins from this place. Therefore, here, when we describe the Sephirot, we will not talk from the Creator's point of view. We will not get acquainted with the Keter as we did in the first lessons. We got acquainted with who is the Giver. We took ourselves and looked at Him. When we talked about Hochma, we looked at what He wanted to give. And here, we already begin to talk about what we want. What do I want? I want to be like Him. How, where, in which aspects? There will also be their ten sephirot. And Bina belongs to the world of Bria, which also needs to be remembered. Bria, if translated from Hebrew, means creation. And it is from this place that the feeling that there is something new really begins.
That is, before this place there was a giver and what he could give us, and from this place reality appears where creation begins to manifest itself. This is the world of Briya, where souls separated from the Almighty appear. They want to love Him and interact with Him. In this world, which is quite high, there is a feeling of personal contact with the Creator. Therefore, in this world, there is such a place that is called the Holy of Holies of the world of Briya. There is the Holy of Holies of Gar de Briya, as it is called in Kabbalah. And when a person enters into spiritual interaction with the Creator at a very high level, where he personally reveals himself to him, it will be called the world of Briya. Individuality already exists there. That is, there is a possibility to act in relation to the Creator. There is someone who wants to manifest His love. He wants to be like Him. He does something. I am being corrected here. There should be a letter Mem Sofit instead of a letter Mem here. I simply made a mistake here. Here is the letter Mem. I am asked what will be the Keter of Bina. Keter is always a giver, and Bina is freedom, likeness, desire to give. Someone who gives these qualities, who is their source, he will be the Keter of Bina. Who is this Keter Bina? The light that the Almighty has given, he has laid such a quality there so that it would awaken in us the desire to the resemble. Therefore, as soon as Malhut Hochma, here too Hochma has Keter, Hochma, Bina, Tefret, and Malhut, as soon as Malhut Hochma awakens to be like Keter, it immediately becomes the Keter of Bina. And Bina has its own ten Sephirot, Keter, Hochma, Bina, Tefret, and Malhut of Bina. Malchut of the highest is always the Keter of the lowest. Therefore, Chochmah's desire to resemble Keter immediately makes it the Keter of Bina. If we look at it, we also can consider all these Sephirot as a triangle. 